Imagine this. You're watching the latest Oscar ceremony from inside the auditorium or from home. Jack Nicholson stumbles onto the stage and approaches the microphone. He greets the audience, flashes that trademark grin, and says this. The nominees for best engineering effects are Roy Pomeroy for Wings, Ralph Hammerass for No Specific Film, and Nugent Slaughter for No Specific Film. And the winner is Roy Pomeroy for Wings. Cue the applause. Something tells me there'd be some confusion in the room, and certainly no standing ovations. Because, of course, movies aren't awarded Best Engineering Effects anymore. In fact, the only time this category appeared was at the first, yes, the very first Academy Awards ceremony on the night of May 16th, 1929, in the Blossom Room at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel in Los Angeles. The inaugural show was hosted by Douglas Fairbanks, honoring the best films released between August 1st, 1927 in August 1st, 1928. It lasted a whole 15 minutes and cost each of the 270 attendees a whopping $5 for admission. So much has changed about the Oscars throughout the decades, many of the categories in this first ceremony changing drastically shortly thereafter or never showing up again. But one of the few categories that has stayed mostly the same ever since that fancy LA dinner in 1929 is Best Actress. In this video, I'm going to explore the 93-year-old ceremony that launched a cherished industry and discuss the first ever Best Actress race in which Janet Gaynor defeated silent movie superstar Gloria Swanson. First, let's talk about how the Academy Awards came to be. It was Louis B. Mayer, famed movie producer and co-founder of MGM, who established the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences in 1927 as a way to unite the five branches of the film industry actors, directors, writers, producers, and technicians. He said at the time, I found that the best way to handle filmmakers was to hang medals all over them. If I got them cups and awards, they'd kill themselves to produce what I wanted. That's why the Academy Award was created. The famous statuette was designed by MGM's art director, Cedric Gibbons. Sculptor George Stanley was paid $500 to execute the original statue from Gibbons' design. Nominees for the inaugural ceremony were notified through a telegram, and in August of 1928, Mayer contacted the Academy Central of Judges to decide the winners, who would be announced three whole months before the ceremony on the back page of the Academy Bulletin. Just imagine the suspense of today's Oscar ceremonies if we knew the winners three months in advance. I'm not sure the think pieces and YouTube videos offering predictions would get as many clicks. The ceremony itself was the only one not to be broadcast on radio or television. Imagine that these days. Glenn Close finally winning her Oscar at some point, with no media record to show for it. At that first event, the Academy Awards was a much more intimate affair, one that consisted of a private dinner with 36 banquet tables. On the menu were items like olives, nuts, half-broiled chicken, and chocolate ice cream. Janet Gaynor later said about the night, it was just a family affair. I remember there was an orchestra, and as you danced, you saw most of the important people in Hollywood whirling past you on the dance floor. It was more like a private party than a big public ceremony. Had I known then what it would come to mean in the next few years, I'm sure I would have been overwhelmed. In 15 minutes, the winners in 12 competitive categories were announced, and 20 additional certificates of honorable mention were given to runners-up in every category. That's another thing that would have been fun to see later on. Imagine if after Juliette Binoche won her surprise Oscar in 1997, Kevin Spacey then called Lauren Bacall up to the stage to receive her honorable mention certificate. So many of the categories that first year look so odd today. Not just engineering effects, which would be gone by the second year, but also best title writing, which went to Joseph Farnham for The Red Mill, best directing for a comedy, which went to Lewis Milestone for Two Arabian Nights, and best directing for a drama which went to Frank Borzage for Seventh Heaven. This was also famously the ceremony that had two Best Picture winners, Outstanding Picture for Wings and Best Unique and Artistic Picture for Sunrise. We've definitely had a few years as of late where two Best Picture winners would have cleared a few things up, am I right? But a few categories have stayed pretty much the same since the very beginning. There were honorary awards that first year that went to Charlie Chaplin for Making the Circus, 
and to Warner Brothers Studio for producing The Jazz Singer. Art direction and cinematography were there, along with screenplay in two categories, adaptation and original story. There's no supporting actor or supporting actress yet, but actor and actress are there, the categories with three nominees instead of five, and one major difference. Actors could win the Oscar for more than one performance. If that rule hadn't been changed, maybe Jessica Chastain could have won supporting actress for the 19 performances she gave in 2011. Emile Jannings was awarded Best Actor in 1929 for two films, The Last Command and The Way of All Flesh, beating Richard Barthelmess and Charlie Chaplin. And the first ever winner of Best Actress was Janet Gaynor for three films. Gaynor wasn't exactly a lock for this one, as she had some serious competition from one of the most famous stars of the silent era, Gloria Swanson, who was nominated for her acclaimed performance in 1928's Sadie Thompson. So how did Janet Gaynor come out on top? Let's look at the nominees. The nominees are, not tonight, but that night at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel on Hollywood Boulevard. First up is Louise Dresser for her performance in A Ship Comes In, which tells of immigrants coming to the United States. She plays Mrs. Presnick in this large ensemble drama, written by Julian Josephson and directed by William K. Howard. This was Dresser's only Oscar nomination in an impressive career of 50 film credits over the span of only 15 years, from 1922 to 1937. She started as a singer on Broadway before getting work in the movies, in the 1930s appearing in many projects opposite Will Rogers. Dresser's performance in A Ship Comes In was admired at the time, but her category was too competitive. Swanson and Gain are bigger names, with more widely seen films. Gloria Swanson will forever be a cinema icon due to her legendary, Oscar-nominated, show-stopping performance in my all-time favorite movie, Billy Wilder's Sunset Boulevard. But some film history buffs might not be aware that she was nominated twice before, in 1930 for The Trespasser and in 1929 for Sadie Thompson. By the end of the 1920s, Swanson was a highly regarded talent and one of the film industry's pioneering women filmmakers, not only acting in Sadie Thompson, but producing it too. Also receiving an Oscar nomination for Best Cinematography, Sadie Thompson tells of a prostitute living in American Samoa who seeks a fresh start while at the same time is pursued by a religious extremist. The film was a modest hit at the 1928 box office, and it offered another brilliant Swanson performance in one of her final projects of the silent era. Swanson likely had a shot at winning the first Oscar for Best Actress. Her film career was still going strong, not fizzling out the way it would in the 1930s, but at that inaugural ceremony, it was going to be hard for any actress to compete with someone who was nominated for three performances. Not that Swanson was upset by her loss. In his book, Gloria Swanson, The Ultimate Star, author Stephen Michael Shearer writes, Gloria didn't put much stock in award ceremonies, and she couldn't have cared less. When she received word she had lost the Oscar to Janet Gaynor, she chose to remind industry insiders that the awards business was like comparing apples and oranges. Janet Gaynor only acted in movies like Louise Dresser for a little more than a decade, between 1926 and 1938, but she absolutely made her mark in that brief window, offering one terrific performance after another and showing why she deserved to be placed in history as the first winner of Best Actress at the Academy Awards. Thank you very much, Walter, and thank you all. I'm so happy that both the Academy and I survived to celebrate this golden anniversary. <laughs> Starting work in the movies as an extra, Gaynor was soon offered a contract at Fox Film Corporation, and by 1927, she was one of the major female stars in Hollywood, notable for playing her roles with sensitivity and depth. What a run she had around this time, with her celebrated performances in Seventh Heaven, Sunrise, and Street Angel. Seventh Heaven came first, the story of a street cleaner who falls in love with a young woman as war intervenes. The film received the most number of nominations at the first Oscar ceremony, five in total, winning Best Director for a Dramatic Picture and Writing Adaptation. Gaynor and lead actor Charles Farrell worked so well together, they went on to collaborate on 10 more films. F.W. Murnau's Sunrise was next, one of the most highly rated silent films ever made, also winning the Oscars for Best Cinematography and Best Unique and Artistic Production. The film tells of an urban woman who seduces a farmer in the hopes that he will murder his neglected wife and join her in the city. Gaynor had long flowing hair in real life, 
but she wore a rigid wig in the film to remove any sense of alluring sexuality. Her performance is a great one, matching at all times Murnau's filmmaking mastery. The last of the three films was Street Angel, which came later in 1928. As a woman on the run from the law, Gaynor at this point had truly found her voice in cinema, sinking her teeth into complicated, three-dimensional characters that allowed her talent to shine. She's so good, so skilled, in all three films, it made sense to award her for all of them, but it was also a decision that made it nearly impossible for either Dresser or Swanson to overtake her in the race. But I think this needs to be said right here about your career. Janet Gaynor was uh, the first actress to receive an Academy Award. This was Gaynor's moment, one we never got to see because the ceremony wasn't broadcast. But at least we have 1937's A Star Is Born, which earned Gaynor another Oscar nomination for Best Actress, and showed her character Vicki Lester winning the award on screen. This is the closest glimpse we'll ever have at what Gaynor might have done or said on the night of May 16, 1929, but at least it's better than nothing. You have no idea how different this is from the Blossom Room. That night, I competed for the first Oscar with Louise Dresser and Gloria Swanson. Uh, King Vidor was there, and of course, my two glamorous co-stars, Charles Farrell and George O'Brien, and... The first Academy Awards ceremony marked a fascinating beginning to an institution that's still going strong today. Yes, there were plenty of kinks that needed to be worked out, some categories that had to go or be changed entirely, but it was the quiet start of something that would eventually turn into so much more. And what a great lineup of Best Actress nominees it was that initial year. There's Louise Dresser, whose nomination keeps her screen memory alive. There's Gloria Swanson, who would certainly have many ups and downs in her long career on stage and screen, but despite never winning the coveted Oscar, she will always hold a special place in Hollywood history due to her performances in Sadie Thompson, The Trespasser, The Unfinished Queen Kelly, and most especially, Sunset Boulevard. And then there's Janet Gaynor, most famous for her starring role in the first version of A Star Is Born. But winning the very first Oscar for Best Actress for three separate performances marks a truly unique addition to her cinematic legacy, too. Here was the only Best Actress winner who earned the award for a body of work, not just a single performance. And in the nearly 100-year scope of Academy Awards history, that's a moment we should never forget. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below who you think deserved to win the first Oscar for Best Actress. Should Swanson have taken it? Or do you think Gaynor was the right choice? See you next time.